I remember when I had my first bipolar patient and I was trying to have a conversation with him. I remember he was extremely positive. He had like <laughs> very big ideas. If I, if I concentrated really hard, I can follow a little piece of the story that he was telling. It was a very altruistic story about how he was gonna, you know, fix homelessness in the United States. And I just remember leaving that experience thinking, that seemed like strangely familiar. <laughs> and then the next time I, I, I talked to um, one of my family members, it's like this light bulb went off and I was like, it's the exact same thing. I'm seeing the exact same thing that I saw in the inpatient psychiatric unit in my family. And that's for me when, you know, my family began to really have these conversations about what we were, what I had never really understood growing up. Dross's experience of mental illness is common. Avoidance and shame have been the norm across societies, cultures, and history. So I'm from Iran originally. We don't really talk about this stuff, and we don't keep records of it. Melody Moisey is an Iranian-American author, lawyer, and human rights activist. She has been diagnosed with bipolar illness. On the threshold of acute mania, Melody spent a lot of time speaking to the press about the political unrest in Iran. I did a lot of television and radio interviews, and um, yeah, which makes it harder for you to identify that as insanity if the rest of the world is looking at you and being like, oh, this is an interesting um, thing that she's doing. As often happens during a typical hypomanic state, Melody became delusional, convinced the U.S. was going to bomb Iran. Concerned about friends and family overseas, she hatched her hypomanic plan. I founded this organization called Hooping for Peace, and it was during the Democratic National Convention. I thought if I went and I hula hooped, it would sort of lead to world peace. I know, it's crazy. It was a mildly manic experience. She packed up her car with 100 hula hoops and headed to Denver and the Democratic National Convention. I ended up hula hooping for like six hours straight in front of the Capitol in Denver. You'd think like the people around me would have said, this is kind of a manic, you know, thing that you're doing, but uh, I, I didn't have a name for it. I, did, I wasn't diagnosed. Most people with bipolar disorder go eight to 10 years before they get a proper diagnosis. And for me, it took over 10 years to get a proper diagnosis. 